Hey everyone, uh, I'm James Trano. I'm with Sine Real Estate. Uh, Cassie will say hello. She's behind the screens. Hi everyone. <laughs> this is typically how it works. Um, I'm standing here with our three presenters. They would like them to all introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Christine Bernardini. I'm a real estate attorney at Touchstone Closing and Escrow. We have uh, offices in Andover, Boston, Chatham, Framingham, Newburyport, Reading, and San New Hampshire. And, and I'm Fred Allard. I'm the sales manager of the Waltham branch of uh, Mortgage Network, uh, uh, similar to Christine's firm. We're located up and down Massachusetts and as well as the East Coast. And I'm Stephen Sala, Senior with Home Inspection, Commonwealth Mass. I'm a home inspector. I'm a civil engineer by training, and I've been doing home inspections in the Boston area for 30 years. So, everyone, you can see that we have people that are professionals in their field. They understand what they're doing and basically, how you can become a homeowner. There's a lot of different steps on the way to signing that final document at closing. Each of them involve these people in that in that journey. I mean, obviously you need to get the mortgage, so you need them to say what you can afford. When you're at that process when you find a home, you're gonna need someone to go through the home thoroughly to make sure that that home is gonna suit your needs and that there's no physical defects in the home that could hamper your, you know, your livelihood and enjoying that home. And of course, Christine's going to bring it home by making sure that all the documents um, involved with signing that final uh, piece of paperwork is complete and accurate. And anything that has to do with insurance and everything, she will make sure that it's done correctly. Now, we're going to have a discussion, um, not really a discussion, excuse me, we're going to have a seminar where each of these people will tell you a little bit about what they do, um, experiences that they've had along the way. And what you need to do before you're considering buying a home, steps that you need to take in order to become, you know, an educated homeowner. So we're going to start off with Fred, because Fred is, you know, taller than all of us. <laughs> Thanks, James. Thanks, Cassie, for inviting me. Uh, and thank you, everyone, who's uh, able to uh, participate uh, both in person and online today. Uh, my, again, my name is Fred Allard. I'm a, I'm a 20 plus year veteran of the mortgage industry, served on both the broker end uh, and, and um, now on the retail end of lending. Uh, started my career in real estate as a realtor back in uh, the, the late, eight, late, late uh, 80s, early 90s with Century 21 um, and uh, realized quickly I, I, I love the industry, but like, like I like this end of it more. And so here I am today. So, you know, for me, I, I try and simplify the process. When I'm, when I'm meeting with a client, it's important to kind of really kind of run through, you know, the six things that I consider important in buying. That starts with the goals. The goals are very important. And, and in, our, in our initial discussion, we're going to talk about, you know, what you're looking for, where you want to be, what your, what your 5, 10, 20 year plan, whether it be regarding your building a family, growing up in a particular town, et cetera. So, we establish those those things right away, um, and once I have a better feel for that, I can really kind of help, really start the process in the discussion of getting you uh, on the right road to finding the right mortgage within your means, within your comfort comfort level, um, in the area that you're looking to buy. Uh, you know, <clears throat> in establishing those, once we've established those goals, we now we have to review you know capabilities and income is is, is you know. First and foremost, probably the biggest capability. And, and you know, we look at, you know, if you're a self-employed borrower, if you're a W-2 type salaried employer, if you're an hourly employer, uh, employee, um, if you're a uh, um, part-time nurse that works 30 plus hours a week, so not technically full-time, how do we utilize that? So everybody has a different source of income, different way of making a living. And again, as part of this process of understanding your capabilities of buying, um, we're going to talk it through so we, we 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 understand exactly what we can utilize and um, uh, qualify you based on. Uh, and you know, when it comes to qualifying income, typically we're we're looking at around forty five percent of your gross monthly income is what lenders will allow, both Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and most other uh, uh, the banks to go towards your home purchase. And that would be your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance. As well as other expenses here, you know, student loans, car loans, credit cards, etc. Uh, so we, once we determine that amount, we can back into kind of where that relates to a mortgage, and then discuss your down payment and what you have for funds, and then start really setting going back to the goals of okay, we need to get the tax in a lot of cases to to get you what you what you're looking for. Um, but again, 
conversation, the, the whole pre-approval process, that's what we're able to establish. And by the end of it, you're, you're, you're that much more comfortable. You know, so in addition to the income, <clears throat> you know, we have to look at the credit. And you know, with the credit, you know, credit scores you see you see on the presentation, the different the different levels of credit. You know, the higher the credit, uh, really helps determine uh, uh, the, where your rate's going to be at. You know, someone that, that has that one of those 740, the highest tier and above credit ratings, they're going to get the best possible rate available in the marketplace. Uh, when you when you're starting to work from like that 620 into 680 range, that that limits your capabilities a little bit. Um, and you know, and, and those those are things that we want to look at right away because that is, again is a factor in your rate. And we want to make sure when we're qualifying, we use the proper rate to um, to get you what you want. So there's no there's no blips. You know, once you find a property, you know, in regards to the credit, the other part that's important in the pre-approval process and okay, is pulling the credit. And, you know, keep in mind when you have a mortgage credit pull. This is one of the most common questions when people if I have my credit pulled too much, it's going to hurt my score. Well, when it comes to a mortgage. You can have your credit pulled, and you can actually, for a two week span following that initial credit pull by a lender, any other lender can pull your credit. It's understood, frankly, that from the bureaus, that you're only going to have one mortgage. And so, unlike other types of credit, mortgage credit pulls and inquiries is okay within a two week span from that initial credit report that's, that's drawn on you. So, don't be fearful of having your credit pulled for a pre approval process. That it really won't affect the credit at all. Um, and what we determine in that credit is we look at it. Are there things on there that does everything match up with what you're aware of? And more times than not, there's, there's a situation that we can fix internally with, with your help to make that credit um, issue that might that have gone unknown to get fixed prior to making an offer on a property, which can mean two things. One, it clears up the issue. Two, it can probably help improve your credit score in many cases, which is, which is a service we offer free of charge. Yeah. Um, you know, next up in the pro process is we talk about assets. You know, what what do you have for assets to put down? You know, and when it comes to assets and, and um, uh, you know, you can have as little as 3% down. And, you know, if you're a VA borrower, borrow, if you're a veteran of, of, of uh, the services, you can you can buy with, with a zero down. So again, we're going to talk through all those, all the different options you might have available based on what your capabilities are, what you're willing to use, and again, what your goals are. Where do you want to be? How much do you want to have left over once you buy, in case you have to do some work, etc. To the property, we will, we're going to discuss all, all the parameters of the process as you as the discussion goes on. Uh, you know, and it's very important to kind of relay that because it's really an important piece. It, it's a it's a building process in the, as we pre approve. Um, and then you know, obviously collateral. What, what kind of property are you buying? Are you buying a single family? Are you buying are you looking to buy a multifamily where we're going to be able to qualify you uh, adding some uh, rental income as well from the from the unit that you won't be living in? <laughs> you know, in those cases that look that, that allows you to buy a bit more because we can we can take a portion of the uh, expected rent, you know, and add that to your income for qualification purposes. So again, those are factors we're all we're, we're going to discuss. Uh, and then the property itself, uh, you know, the you know, you know, property. We have to, we have to make sure that it, as part of the loan process, once you go forward with financing, that that loan, um, that that loan, the property is going the the property is going to appraise at what you're paying for, and, and that's the appraisal part of the process. In, in buying is a protection for you because if it for some reason comes in below below the purchase price, it's an opportunity for you to figure out your options, discuss with the seller, potential renegotiation, things of that nature. Uh, but you know that, that's that's like the end piece. Um, you know, more, the, the probably easiest part of, what our, of our discussion is 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 that the harder parts and the, and the, the more back and forth we're going to have is when we're talking about. You know your income and your assets, and then going right back to the beginning. What are your goals? How can we match up everything you're capable of doing to get you within your goals? And that's by the end of our assessment and pre-approval process, you should hopefully have a comfort level of okay. Here's where I'm at. I'm I can go buy right now. I need to get X, Y, and Z in order, or I have you know I'm a year away. I'm, I'm going to save some more money. I'm going to have I'm going to have more of a cushion. So when I do buy, I feel comfortable. Uh, on, on in the whole process, and it really helps you kind of just get a handle on what you need to do 
is what you need to be ready for down the road. There's so many, even despite today, where there's so much information available online and, and um, in the media, uh, until you discuss your situation, you don't really know. And, and people just, they have a lot of thoughts, a lot of questions. There's a lot of back and forth every time we have a, uh, a, meet with a client for the first or second time. And uh, that's what it's all about. And there's, there's no obligation. It's just, it's a, it's a service we offer. Um, you know, a lot of times the, 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 the client will be coming directly from someone like James or Cassie, uh, who's been showing them homes and, and wants to get a, make sure they're ready, make sure they're ready to uh, take the next steps. Uh, and that's what we're here for. You know, and then once once the time comes, you find a home, you make an offer, we're part of that process with you, with making the offer, putting a pre approval letter together for you. Uh, so you can be, uh, you can be, you know, ready and able to buy on a moment's notice. And that, we do that seven days a week, all the time. You can ask, you can ask James about that. I'm sorry, I'm walking on camera. Yeah, just to see. Sure. All right. We heard a lot about the things that go into making mortgage yeah. and what a client should do. What shouldn't we do? <laughs> That's a great question. And, you know, and I, 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 we all know the person that goes to wants to buy a home, and once they get that mortgage pre approval, they go buy a car. Correct. I mean, that that's adding more debt onto themselves and making an additional payment, and that could skew yeah. the numbers, right? Well, exactly. And, and, and what we what we do as part of our process, and a great point that you brought up that I can elaborate on, Jeff, is you know regarding that, you know, we do talk we do talk about are you planning to do anything in the future? Are you are you are you buying a new car? Well, you know, a lot of times when we do review that credit report, we'll see a we'll see a loan payment that might be coming to you. What's your plan? Is it a lease? Is it a purchase? Are you buying another one? Are you getting rid of it? Are you paying it off completely? What's what's your intent with the with the, with that auto uh, and or you know credit card? And um, we discuss that. And in, in in the process, you don't want to take out any new debt, but if you need to for some reason, just discuss it with your loan officer and make sure that it's not going to be a it's not going to be a um, uh, an issue in, in, in your financing. Many times it's not. And and once we have the discussion, we know what to expect. It's it's a non issue. Uh, Okay, I have a couple more questions. Sure, just, just uh, throw them out. Sure, I mean, like open this one here for um, people that are looking to buy homes often feel concerned about debt, debt that they have or credit they have exposed themselves. How do you feel about people that have credit like credit cards, but they're not, it's not utilized? But I've seen some people say, Well, I know I'm gonna buy us, I want to free up credit, I, must, I need to close credit cards. I I don't think that's usually the best thing to do because no. that that shows that they actually are credit worthy. It, 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 you know, it's a fun, it, the credit scoring models are constantly changing. You know, as you as you may may or may not know, there's three bureaus that we work with: uh, a TransUnion, Equifax, and Experion. And for lending purposes, we utilize the middle credit score um, of the three. When, once we pull credit, and they all have slightly different models that we work off of. But for lending purposes, those those are the three bureaus that we work with. Um, this is that's all lenders, and, uh, and they all kind of use the same criteria using that middle credit score. Um, but to, to answer your question, uh, oddly enough, you have a credit card that you close out that could actually affect your score negatively, temporarily. It would be a temporary thing, but it, would, it could actually have a negative effect on your score. So, like again, we we don't want people to make changes dramatically in their credit at all, especially once they. Initiate a, 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 a pre-approval and indoor accepted offer. Uh, if they want to make changes after the fact, the day they close for that matter, that's fine. Um, but while we're in process, we like to keep things on the same page that we started at, so uh, there's no glitz along the way. All right. And as far as employment is concerned, all right, you're looking to buy a home. Um, you worked at the same job for five years. A better opportunity comes along, and you're thinking of moving your job. You're in the middle of in your approval process mm -hmm. for buying your home. Mm -hmm. and what should someone do? Should they? <laughs> is it a do they delay taking that new job? Do they have to be employed for a certain amount of time before they can be reconsidered? Or, or does that how does that work? It, it's, it's very important to start making sure you tell your woman for sure. <laughs> um, uh, because that you know that can, can be an issue depending on what, what the delay might be, right? But in typical circumstance, if someone's making an improvement staying within the same industry exactly. it's a salary position and it's an improved salary position um that's a, a non-issue we, okay. we just need to know because we we are you know our, our applications they all can be kind of dotted properly where are you going to be 
really towards the day you close on the loan. That has to be what's on the application, right? And so, and, but in many cases, you, you know, someone um, is, has, you know, they're, they're leaving one job and starting another, yeah. and they haven't started yet with a new position, but we know about it because that's part of the process. We're going to find that out. Um, the offer letter can be, as long as we have a, a executed offer letter from the company, okay. we can we can we can work with that to utilize that you know that income that we need to etc. So we can work with those situations, but again, keeping the dialogue open at all times, you know, at the time of offer through the time you close is critical to ensuring a smooth process. And sorry, everyone. One last question, and then yeah. I'll, I'll I'll let what what that, know, that, we'll get Steve up here. Uh, <laughs> um, we have. We actually ran into this a while ago, and I'm not sure if you remember. We had a person that was in Canada who wanted to buy in Massachusetts. Now they had not been working in Mass in states, so it was a question of what does someone do when they're moving into this country, Cassie, <laughs> <laughs> and it's they want to buy their first home? Do they have how long do they have to establish credit? What do they have to do to establish credit for a mortgage in this country? When well, moving here, yeah. it's it's common. It's a common issue when someone first comes to the country. Uh, you, you know, um, we see a lot of people coming into the states now. And that's why now. Yeah, uh, and, and you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of like say Canadian citizens who work for U.S. companies, but they're they live in Canada. Yeah. Um, in situations like that, where they might have to transfer down things of that nature, and you kind of work with that, and they have a Canadian credit history. Sometimes we can use. A, a, a European and or say Canadian credit report right. um, to establish that the payment payment uh, criteria, etc. That their credit is worthy. Um, it has you to know the job to make sure that the job as it saying that the same position. rules apply up when it comes to the income. <clears throat> but when it comes to the credit, we can help them establish credit right away. So if they're six plus months away from buying, or people can pay. They can get credit cards that are secured by a deposit or something like that. Something that gets them gets them their feet in the door, helps them establish credit right, right away, um, and uh, you know, so they can take the next step. Um, but we work with that, and one of the one of the benefits of mortgage network is you know we're conforming. Uh, we're we're a mortgage bank that we you know we lend our own money for you know conforming Freddie Mac Freddie Mac Fannie Mae type loans as well as FHA VA etc. But uh, what our most valuable niche, in, especially in, in the Massachusetts areas, we're a very large portfolio uh, that we work with a number of different um, outside banks up and down the East Coast that have an appetite for certain types of loans. And a lot of times folks will, will listen to a loan with a story. You know, so someone like that Canadian citizen that hasn't established credit yet, but we can show that they have a strong, they have a strong history where they came from. Yeah, they have, they're employed in the U.S. They make you know their, their income is sufficient, etc. Every they check every box from a criteria standpoint, but the credit we can potentially work with that, you know. Okay. And whereas conventionally it just doesn't work, so that's that's again part of the discussion, part of the knowledge, and we're always working with unique scenarios every single day, especially in this current market. Well, see, we get we're getting information that you probably wouldn't have gotten, and we this is why we're inviting people here that can talk from various points of view. Uh, especially within the industry that they're they're coming from. Yeah. Um, we're gonna probably invite Fred back later on it, um, to talk about um, adjustable rate. Okay. Or just because yeah, we parts posted parts. a video, we posted something up about adjustable rates this morning in a couple of social media uh, platforms, um, but it's not been a discussion that we've had because that's something that home buyers are now looking towards when making their first home buying, home buying purchase. Because the conforming thirty-year mortgage has gone up a bit, and uh, so it gives gives them an option, right? Yeah. All yeah. right. So thanks, Fred. Thank you. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. We're going to welcome Steve Sala here.